Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Anime King And today I'm going to be giving you part 19 of what if Naruto was given abilities by 4 devils Remember to get this one to 100 like as usual Share this to all of your friends on your social media platform And also go ahead and check out the brand new episode of what if Naruto had a new dream That will change everything over on Anime King 2 And over on Anime King 3 I post a brand new episode of what if Naruto was neglected with Jashin sealed inside of him so go ahead and enjoy that as well guys and on this channel I post a new episode of what if Naruto became the god of lightning so go ahead and enjoy that as well and remember if you're new to go ahead and click that red subscribe button and become a part of the making family and thank you for all of your help and support remember to comment down below and tell me if you're new I'll be replying talking about all of you so yeah without further ado what do you say begin this new episode? Start the intro. So, the last part we left off, Naruto and his special op group had made their way towards the land of grass. As they commenced their first mission of taking down all the equipments that were being sent to the land of sound. As the two, small nations were allied together to create god knows what, but they were destroying every single thing that was being sent there. The group went on countless missions after missions. Meanwhile, Suriki, as Use the three members, which insists of Jugo, Karin, and Sigetsu, as he merged them with the tail beast power, turning them into a whole different being. They would be great protection to Sasuke when the war began. As he finally got what he wanted, he went to the demon realm along with Kabuto. The hidden grass sent a report as he wanted to, well, cease fire with Konoha, as a special op team that Naruto was leading was too much for them. Cutting down every single one of their ranks, they could barely do anything. They wanted a ceasefire. They didn't want to be enemies with Konoha anymore. Meanwhile, Sodiki made his way towards Demon Realm. As he got what he wanted, a massive darkness tower, which he would use on a devil eclipse. And he would plunge this world into pure chaos, destroying everything. He then would create a new world from the ashes and be the eternal ruler. As he made Sasuke, the Kage of the Hidden Sound, at Konoha, as Snaddy. After talking with the council, she has declared her to her successor as she retired and gave him the role of 6 Hokage. So right now the two Hokages are going up against each other as the Sona had declared war on Konoha. For that minor village to do that, they must have something big. Well, it's not like everyone couldn't see the giant tower that loomed up in the sky as soon he was ready. Time passed after that as Naruto was in the office. He would have to go on the front line and Hinata came to him. She was pregnant. As she was worried, but he promised that he would come back no matter what. As he knew that it would be dangerous, but he would come back. Lee was talking to Kin, as they too had the same reason to come back as well. Sasuke was furious why Sodiki took him off the front line. But he told Sasuke that everything has a reason. And he doesn't have to worry. He will be taking on Naruto. Sasuke didn't really care much as long as he get to kill the dope, he didn't really care. Sodiki was just using everything to his advantage as the battle of the millennia was gonna start. So yeah guys, so basically that's what I thought you guys can switch across the place and check out for yourself so just to begin this new episode. On the front line, as Naruto stood his arms behind him, his eyes peering over to the open field, waiting for the hidden sound invasion to come, as he had the army of Kanoha ninjas behind him, as they were all packed and ready, preparing for war. Sunavi, so Jerry, and Harrison all stood beside the white hair team as they were all in their battle armor ready for the battle to come. Harrison took a breath. I thought that when I retired, I wouldn't have to fight another war. I guess I was wrong to assume that, he said. Well, you shouldn't think that way, old man, said Naruto. Once you enter this lifestyle, you will never want to leave for as long as you live. Harrison laughed at that. I guess you're right, Naruto, he said. After all, I don't have to fight in this matter. 
but I still chose to say Hirson as he faced the battlefield. Have you alerted the sand for assistance? asked Nadi. She was not doubting the power of Kanoha, but suddenly he was up to something rather dangerous, and he would need as much help as he can fathom. I sent a messenger bird to them three days ago. Gar said it would take a little time for them to get here and help. I also spoke to Itachi as well, but he was unable to help since Kusa was starting something with them as well. Itachi would have loved to help, but he still had to protect his new home and protect his wife and his child. Before anything could be said, the sound of ruffling could be heard. As Naruto looked up, it seems they have arrived. As he pulled out Rebellion and slashed it upwards, everyone watched in amazement as a blade of chakra went up in the air. The blade of chakra went high up in the air before an explosion could be heard as something started to fall from the air. Objects, a lot of them. As Naruto stabbed Rebellion in the ground as he held up his hand, serenity he said, a huge blast blew away the falling objects as they embedded into the ground, far away from the army. He then grabbed Rebellion and with a yell, he rushed towards the battlefield with his army behind him as they saw the massive group from the sound coming towards them. But Naruto was not in the mood given the time of the day as he wanted to kill that team. Tsunade, Jiraiya and Hirzen pulled out Kunas with explosive tackles as they tossed them. All of them went through hand sign. Kunai, Shadow Clone Jutsu. The Kunais multiply into groups of 50. But Naruto was right behind the weapons. Naruto, you idiot! You're rushing right in the crossfire, Jiraiya shouted. The weapons exploded. As it took out a large number of the frontliners. But Naruto got consumed in the smoke as well. But Naruto did not let the smoke slow him down. Stinger, he says, he move off. His feet rushing so fast, he pierced right through. As Son Kunoichi, his blade did not stop there though as he pierced through a meal. As he kept on piercing through shinobis after shinobis until the blade was too in deep in flesh. He had to spin and throw them off his blade. Three Son shinobis dropped down on him, he simply spin as he took out their legs from underneath them literally, slicing them off. Before he used the flat side of the sword, batting them away, he launched himself forward to the group as he started to slice, rip and dice. He swift, he dodge, he spin, he slice, he flicked Rebellion in his hand and threw it forward. It spin like a gig and sliced off several of their heads before coming back to his arm as he stabbed it in the ground. An explosion came from the ground, blowing a large number of them away along with the dead bodies. Where are you, you bastard? Nurta shouted as he grabbed another sound you know, by his neck before throwing the man right onto his opponent as he pierced his own friend. He flipped over and grinded Rasengan into both of their faces as he propelled himself in high in the air. He held out his hand as Rasengan formed, but this one was a basically miniature sun as it shined so bright everyone had to look up. Solar flare Rasengan, he said. He smashed it in the ground. The explosion wasn't anything normal. Screams of the dying could be heard as their bodies were obliterated by the blast. As Naruto crawled out of the massive crater that he had created, as he launched himself towards the group, fear started to enter their eyes as no one could slow down or stop this monster. As Naruto found himself surrounded, the ninja shaken, he smirked as he summoned Yamato to his other hand. It looks like a great day, doesn't it? He said. His smile turned bloodlusted. A great need to die. Back with the frontline force, the others had engaged in their own battle. Anyone was stupid enough to come in close contact with Snavi. She beat the crap out of them. Sergio was spinning Enma that wasn't in staff form, knocking down some shinobis after some shinobis. Jiraiya was weaving through the group's ear extended so long and firing off Senmon into a large army as the members of Naruto Deva squad Uncle, Kurna, Yujito, all of them are out there fighting as well. With them used to these kind of things, they could take off more force than calling the rest of the Kanoa Shinobis. Sakura dropped from mid ear after she leaped. Her fist covered in chakra, she slammed it. The earth rooted up and pierced through several Son Shinobis as she grabbed, she tossed, she punched, she ripped. She went through hands as her hands were applied with the chakra sculpted technique as she moved forward. As she sliced a man's throat, the man dropped to his knees, Sakura spin and slice right through another stomach. As she severed the tendons in one of their arms, his arms went lame as she slammed her knee right into his chest. The man coughed up blood as he fell down to the ground. She quickly rushed to another set of hand signs. Earth release. Earth spike pull, she said, slamming her hand on the ground. 
a massive trail of spikes went forward. Screams could be heard as they got impaled. She winces at Kunai, stabbing her thigh. She turned towards the sound shinobi, who was about to chuck another Kunai. The ground underneath her shifted as she fell, only to receive a hard punch in the stomach as her arms were grabbed by two sound shinobi. As one of them came towards her, the first one that hit her with a kunai. Hmm, cute. You've done a lot of damage for someone so small and puny. You know what? You've dealt a lot of problem to a lot of my comrades. Perhaps I should have a little fun with you. Before I kill you, he said. As he reached out towards her shirt, only for his friends to wince in pain as they fell down. Something then hit him in the back of the neck as he collapsed. As Sakura looked up to see Neji with his milk gun activated. Are you alright? He asked. She nodded in thanks as she removed the kunai from her leg as she started to heal the wound. Before getting back up, she kissed Nature in the cheek, surprising him greatly. Thanks for helping me, she said. As she then turned, let's go. As the both of them went off back in the battle, back with Naruto, as Naruto slashed Yamato several times in mid ear, the invisible slices ripped into the skin of the Sound Shinobis. Screams of agony and pain could be heard. As Naruto moved forward, he used the blood end of his sword as he slammed it into one of their foreheads, busting it wide open for kicking the man's body straight to the back. As he hadn't seen anyone of valuable importance right now, these were all just pawns to be disposed of. As Naruto stopped and gazed over to his side, as he saw a few of his shinobis had fall, but a small number, not compared to the large amount of sound shinobis that were dead or in the process of dying. As he saw what was going on, Sudki was sending all these pawns to get slaughtered. But why? Was he waiting for us to get tired out so he can send the stronger ones to take us out? He turned as he grabbed the face of a sound shinobi and slammed the man into the ground, who was trying to sneak up on him as he slammed his heel into the man's skull, cracking it, his feet breaking through. As the man died instantly, he had to quickly get to the end. As he started to run towards the enemy force, many of them started to scream in fear. As Naruto sliced throats, took off arms, took off heads, as he made his way through, he's a demon! As screams could be heard in fear as he came towards them, they started to run for their very life, realized that they were getting nowhere and he was slaughtering every single one of them he came upon. As Naruto sliced a man right through the chest, the man dropped down to the ground gasping for breath. Stay away from me, you damn demon! Naruto dropped right on the man's chest and started to pound his face in until nothing was left but a bloody smear. As he raised the blade in the ear, Kid, calm down. You're getting too close to enter your demonic bloodlust. Remember, you also have comrades here. If you lost yourself now, it will be too problematic. As Naruto paused, he shook his head. What, what the hell just happened, he said. As his hands were dripping with blood, and he saw a body underneath him with the head completely squashed. Your bloodlust is taking over you. But why? That's the question. As Naruto felt a pulse of the money engine coursing through his veins, as he started to feel a stronger pulse. Oh crap. It's a devil eclipse, said the Kyube. Naruto was confused. Devil eclipse? What's that, he said. It was an event that took place five years ago. During the human demon war. That is when Sparta escaped the devil world and helped seal it away. This event bring both human and demon realm closest as possible together. It also helps some demon to escape in the human realm, but a small weak percentile. This has a negative effects of making anyone with demonic energy get overrun by demonic bloodlust and they end up losing themselves, not being able to tell what is friend and what is foe. As it clicked in Naruto, so that he was not saving up his stronger forces, he was stalling for time. He is trying to stall to get some control of the power. But for what reason? As Naruto leaped backwards as snake crashed into the ground where he once stood. As he looked up at the snake, half snake, half human, it was Kabuto. My my, naruto -kun. you sure have caused quite the damage to our little army. I mean just look at this, Kabuto said, as he extended his arms around. You're like a one-man army of your own. And what if I am, said Naruto, then I guess you're in need of a lesson to be learned. After all, Hokage are not. You're still weaker than me. Kabuto snapped his finger as Team Taka came out in their demonic forms. Hmm. It seems Orochimaru's arrogance has passed on to you, even in his passing. Well, let's change that, shall we? 
as he stepped forward only to be stopped by a wall of sand. He turned his gaze to the left to see Gara standing there. I'm afraid I can't let you take this one, Naruto. He's mine, Gara said. Naruto smirked, I guess I can let you have him, after all. Robot Kagi, said Naruto. As Gara smirked back, Snaddy, Jiraiya, and Hiroson joined them. Naruto, are you alright? asked Snaddy. Naruto nodded. I'm fine, he said. But I need you guys to take control of the forces here. Wait, what do you mean? Are you going somewhere? she asked. As Naruto nodded, Sasuke and Sodiki are not here. At the moment, they're probably at the hidden zone as we speak, not even joining the battle. I need to head over there and stop them from what they're planning, and I can't do that unless I have someone holding on the army. You're going over there to face him alone? asked Kurzan. I must do it, said Naruto. I promised that bastard that he and I would have a war to decide which one of us is the superior one, and I always keep my promise. Snaddy quickly summoned a small slug. Fine. Take Katsuya with you, she said. So that way we can know if you're alright. Naruto nodded as he took hold of a slug as he went into his jacket. He then bit his thumb and went to hand sign as he slammed his hand down. As he flipped up on Sien's back as he flew towards the tower. Kabuta saw this and he was about to try and stop him. But the groan exploded under his feet, forcing Miss Licker away as the sand nearly grabbed him. Hmm. So you want to play, Kazakagi, he said. But it seems I'm still outnumbered. So it's even odds. He went through hand sign. Edo Tensei, he said, as three coffins came in front of him. The four Kages, Levin Ninja, looked at him as they wondered what could he have possibly summon? Who could he have possibly summon? As the door fell, their eyes widened in shock. Meanwhile, upon the tall tower, Sodiki and Sasuke were in one of the rooms. It was like a chamber of some sort, with many ruins and many seals upon the walls and on the floors. In the center of the chamber was a, like, a pedestal for like a sacrificial something, but unknown to him, Sasuke couldn't see because Sodiki cloak, and his hood was down, but he was smirking darkly. The man then turned as he faced Sasuke with a smirk, as he raised his arms towards the room they were in. Look at this place, Sasuke. Do you now realize what amazing treasures this place ensures? Sasuke had to turn and activate as he glanced around the area. What exactly is this supposed to do to make me stronger, Sasuke asked. Sodiki laughed a bit under his breath. Well, you see, Sasuke, I have been planning my... plan for a couple of years now. Many, many years. Through the Demon Realm, I have found a lot of interesting discoveries about this place. He walked over to the pedestal and sliced his hand open as he allowed his blood to drip into it. This place holds massive quantity of power that humans couldn't even fathom. To comprehend, imagine Sasuke, in this place, one can summon the power to destroy worlds, level planets, and even slay a god-class demon with a single blast of energy. However, in order to do this, there is something that is required. Sasuke looked curious, and what is the requirement he asks as he walked past Sunhi, only to waste. As he looked down to see a sword through his chest. It's simple that one of us is required to be at sacrifice to the pedestal and our blood to feed into it. I'm sorry, but I'm afraid this is where we cut our relationship. Sasuke burst into a pile of snakes though. So did he had to move from the Shidori that nearly strike right into him as he landed calmly. So that is why you did all of this for me. So you can use me as a sacrifice to be the king of your new world, said Sasuke. So did he smiled. As he burst into shadows as he reformed himself, close to Sasuke. You are right, my dear boy. At first, I wanted the sacrifice to be Naruto. But he's far too much of a challenge to be wasted. But then I saw you, and everything started to fall perfectly in place. I knew if I persuaded you to come to my side, then I would gain the power I so rightfully deserve. As he slammed his force edge blade onto the ground, he didn't reach up as he pulled his foot back. His face was old and wrinkly. He didn't even have a single hair in his head, just a single small soul patch under his chin. Two strange tattoos were running on his skull as they came down to his cheeks as his eyes showed the machine gun that spin rapidly as a force edge in his hand started to cackle with red lightning. Sasuke quickly summoned his two blades to his hands, knowing that he would need them for the fight that will commence. So that is what you look like under that hood, gotta say. I'm not really impressed. So did he laugh lightly as he cracked his neck from left to right. I'm not in the mood of impressing you, my student, only to achieve the goal that has long since slipped from my grasp. And the only way for it to be obtained is through your death 
as he rushed towards Sasuke. With Naruto, as he was soaring onto his dragon he saw, the place started getting a reddish view. As he glanced up to see, the sun being blocked, a red moon was covering over the sun. As he felt the demonic power inside his body tremble, as he could feel it raging. Back inside, the Amaterasu's hit Sasuke as he sent black flames straight towards Sodiki. Sodiki brought up a shield of darkness as he blocked the black flame from reaching him. The shield made contact with the black flames as it exploded, forcing Sodiki to leap away. As soon as Sodiki's feet touched the ground, he was stabbed through the back by Sasuke. From Alastar, you should never turn your back on the Uchiha, Master said Sasuke, as he released a potent electricity into Sodiki's veins only for Sodiki to burst into black goo as Sodiki appeared behind Sasuke out of darkness as he brought the force edge blade down and take Sasuke's head clean off you should follow your own advice and watch yourself around me after all I am a master of darkness said Sodiki as he saw Sasuke remains turn into snakes slithering around all the room Shidori he heard Sodiki turned as he grabbed Sasuke's extended hand and throw him into the air. Sasuke twists. Shidori, Ryudan, he said. The Shidori twists and roared as it turned into a dragon and came straight down towards Sodiki. He scoffed as he sliced right through it with the force edge as Sasuke landed and fired out a stinger technique. Sodiki blocked the strike with the force edge. Well, he tried. Sasuke stabbed Alastor right into the ground as he used his other blade, Exia, as he fired out several fireballs. Sodiki used his blade as leverage as he pushed himself in the air as he landed on the ceiling. Are you planning on fighting me? Or are you just gonna dodge all my attacks like a little bitch at Sasuke? Hmm, Sodiki said. Sasuke smirked as Sodiki noticed Kunai's on the ground, arranging a circle with Alastor in the center. What is he? Thunderdome! said Sasuke as Alastor started to charge with electricity. Sodiki was right above Alastor. As the lightning shot up in a massive arc, Sasuke leaped away as the lightning attack obliterated the entire place, blowing the ceiling apart, forcing Sonki to get crushed under the rubble. Sasuke panted as he picked himself up, as he had set up his technique perfect while fighting with Sonki. Looks like you lose, you bastard. Sasuke heard chuckling, dark chuckling. He stood back, shocked, as Sonki came out of the smoke, not even a scratch on his body. I am sorry my student, but may I ask, what the hell was that move you tried to slay me with? It was far too pathetic and weak to even scratch a part of my body. His voice started to get darker as darkness started to swell around him. It seems you are still the same little weak boy I met all those years ago. However, I suppose you have earned the right for me to show you my true form in all of its glory. The darkness formed a cocoon around him as Sasuke stepped back in shock, feeling the immense power. As the cocoon started to crack before exploding out, forcing Sasuke to close his eyes. When he opened them, he stood in complete shock to what he saw. What? What, what the hell are you? He asks. Sasuke finds and stabs Sasuke in the stomach with his arm, his nails extending long. Sasuke trembled, something shooting into his body before his body went limp. Sasuke tossed him over to the side. As he returned back to normal, I am the devil, he said. He grabbed Sasuke as he was prepared to activate a jutsu that would change the entire world. Meanwhile, with Naruto, the large tower was still a couple of distance away from him. Given the fact that he could see from here, just show how massive the thing was, as he wondered what will happen if Sasuke awakened the power. Naruto-sama, we're approaching the tower. We will be there in the next minute, Cien said. I'm coming, you smug bastard. You better be ready. Suddenly, Cien turned in mid-ear as something hot passed him. A ball of lava. As Naruto paused, as he saw a red dragon with someone on the top of it. You always cease to amaze me, my descendant. The familiar voice of Sodhi came out as Naruto narrowed his eyes towards the man. I guess you don't like to wait any more than I do, huh? No, this place is far too small for a battlefield for someone like us. He glanced up towards the eclipse that was almost here. When the eclipse is completed, then and only then, Will the real fun begin as the eclipse was knowing the atmosphere of the earth? His smile was so wide and gleeful. As Naruto watched as the sky split open, it was like a portal, a mirror opened up. 
with another world behind it of pure darkness. I'm afraid you must part ways, Naruto, because I need to set the bridge that will link this world with your battlefield, and I can't have you to follow me. Not yet. Meet you there, though, he said, as he was covered in a veil of shadows before he vanished, leaving the dragon behind with Sien and Naruto. So did the dragon roar as flames covered its body. Naruto-sama, are you ready? Yeah, said Naruto. Then, let's slay this bitch, said Sien, as he flew forward. Meanwhile, at the front lines, Gara, Snavi, Jiraiya, Hirzen, were looking at the three fallen members of the Akatsuki, Kisame, Madara Uchiha, and Nagato. Everyone was surprised to see him resurrect the three of them as they wonder, did he resurrect Orchmar as well? I know what you must be thinking right now. Why haven't I brought back Orchmar yet? But it can be done. I'm afraid his soul was obliterated from this world. All that remained of him was the parts that I have infused in my own body. But Urchimaru doesn't matter anymore. All that matter now is the here and now. The coffins sunk back as three shinobis step out of them. Prepare to see a technique that only a true medical master can learn. Forbidden medical ninja art. Heavenly palm resurrection said Kabuto. White glow shot from his palm and went straight into the bodies of the reanimation. Their skin started to turn flush and fill with life. Their eyes becoming lively. What in the world is this? asked Navi. Kabuto laughed. This is the result of something neither the second Okagi or Urchimar could do. Because I am the only one that has perfected it, he said. His grin becoming wider and wider as he spoke. His eyes still with glee. I have fully resurrected them back to the life. When they died four years ago. But the difference is, I don't have to use Kunai to fully reanimate them. As I just demonstrate with the power of my ninjutsu. As he held up his hand, the same white glow overtook them. Snade looked on in shock. You've truly mastered the forbidden jutsu that Urchimaru left behind and improved them. Kabuto laughed like a maniac. It's green wide. Yes, I was able to achieve a level in the medical field that not even you, Snavi, the greatest medic, <laughs> has able to reach. I have the power to rise to resurrect the dead with just my power. I am now in a class of my own as I hold life and death in my bare hands. I have surpassed and achieved the power that many medical ninja strive for and wish they could gain, but never will. Snavi shook her head. There's a reason why those techniques are forbidden. It's not because of the taxing chakra it, that is required. It's because of the toll that they take on you. Vedo Tensei does give you ability to summon those who have departed from this world. But to bring back the departed, peace of your soul is removed and sacrifice. To allow the mortal to come back into their body. That special resurrection juice that you just performed is sapping your own life force as you need to use it instead of your chakra to make sure that the dead can come back alive. You're doing the same thing that Urchimaru would have done if he had lived. You're killing yourself, you fool. Shut up, you blonde bitch, he said, not able to accept the truth. It doesn't matter because today, you all will die. As he commands his new pawns to move and attack the four Tagi Leva Shinobis. I got Nagato, after all. He was my student, said Jiraiya, as he prepared to fight his old student. I got Madara, since it's time we settled this rivalry of bad blood between the Uchiyas and the Senjus, as she cracked her knuckles. Well then, it looks like I got Kisame, although it's not something I would choose at first glance, but I guess I'm stuck with him. As Gara went straight after Kabuto, forcing Kabuto to leap away, as Kabuto rushed into the forest, Gara created a sand platform and chased after him. As Gara sent a wave of sand towards him, he leaped up in the air as he moved quickly. Dashing from tree branch to tree branch, he leaped back out into the open road as the trees were crushed. The sand trampling everything and just flattened them to the ground. Sand release. Sand missile, said Gara. It's sand to the shapes of small projectiles. A lot of them as he showered down onto the valley. Kabuto had to flip up in the air as Gara launched two sand blasts. Kabuto raised his arms to block. Kabuto was shocked when he didn't feel anything. As the sand blast burst into pieces, multiplying the hundreds as he slammed into his body, he was sent sailing into a large arm of pure sand. Gar raised him in mid-air and trampled him down into the ground. 
before dropping it back down on him. Boom! As Gar lowered himself, as Kabuto picked himself up, my my, Kazakage sama, you sure are in a hurry to kill me, or perhaps to die today. Gar said nothing as he raised his hand, as Kabuto got trapped in a sand cocoon, as Gar tightened his fist, sand coffin, he said, as it squashed Kabuto on the inside. Well, it looked like he got crushed. Gar snarled, he's let down the sand to reveal a pile of dead snake bodies. Clapping could be heard as the real Gara came out of the forest with a smirk plastered all over his face. Very well done, Kazakage sama. I would say that you pose a threat to killing me. But let's see how you can face those that came before you, he said. As he went through hand sand quickly. Hey, don't aim safe, he said. Gara fired several sand shurikens, but they were embedded into four coffins. Kabuto licked his lips. Ah. So let's see, how you do against your predecessors? The coffins fell forward as each man inside were in a black clothing with no print on it. In front of him were four men that he held something in common with. The first man was tall, rather slightly. He looked to be in the age of his early 50s with white, red hair, with a goatee. The first, Kezikagi, the first Jinjuki of the Ichibai and the founder of the Hinesan village. The second man looked to be in his early 40s. His head was bald and in a rather large build. The second, Kazukagi, the founder to the San Puppeteer Ninjutsu and his great grandfather. The third man was probably the shortest with long black hair and jet black eyes. The third, Kazukagi, the strongest Kazukagi in history. He was his grandfather. The last one was someone Gara hated, which he had killed himself personally to get revenge. The fourth Kazakagi, his father. Prepare yourself, Kazakagi sama, because you now have the opportunity to face all of those that have gained the record that you have. So let's see if you're the best Kazakagi out of them all. As the four of them start to change their gazes, the fourth Kazakagi looked upon Gara. Gara, you have grown since my death. What have you been doing? He said. Gara, I twitched slightly. Doing your damn job, bastard, said Gara. The other Kazakage turned towards the fort with confusion over their faces. Fort Kazakage sama, what is your relationship to this boy? The third asked. The fort kept his eyes on his son. He's my son. The current Jinjulki of the One Tails. Plus, by the look of things, it seems like he's not the current Kazakage. Gara shook his head. I'm afraid I no longer carry the Shikaku inside of me. He was killed a long time ago during the Chunin exams. The others were curious about that. Their bodies were still broken down. Before they could say anything else, as Kabuto quickly used his resurrection jutsu on their bodies, as Kabuto brought them all back to life with his control. As Gar noticed that Kabuto seemed to waver for a moment there, Gar wondered if his eyes were deceiving him, but he could have sworn that he saw Kabuto turn into like a 50 year old man before his body returned back to normal. Enough of this nonsense, it's time for you to experience fighting those that precede you. As the four of them step out of the coffins into the light, Gara brought up his sand. As he looked towards Kabuto, rather winded, it seems Nelisamo was right in her assumption. You are dying. Shut up. You don't know anything, said Kabuto, as he glared at Gara. Besides, you shouldn't worry about me. Worry about yourself. After all, you're in a bad, very, very bad position. You might even die. The bodies of the Kazakage moved forward as Gara brought his center on him. I just had to tell Naruto to leave you to me. I should have gone that white here, idiot, said Gara. Kabuto cough. Looking into his palm, there was blood. It mattered not what that white here kid do. He will fall at the hands of Sodiki Sama. And his village will fall at the hands of my subordinates. He snapped his finger. And three cloaked figures appeared behind him in bowing positions. What is your order? Kabuto sama. The biggest one of the three said, Kabuto coughed violently once again. As he spoke, take out the front line in the Kanoha army and destroy the village. The three figures nodded as they vanished from view. As Kabuto smirked at the event that was going to play out. As he coughed once more, time skip as Sakura was taking on some ninja sums right to left. She looked up as she heard something only leap away. Boom. 
something exploded right in the earth. Many sound ninjas cry out as they were burned by hot molten lava. As the person picked themselves up, it seems you're quite strong, the person said. What's your name? Soccer near their eyes. It's not polite to ask someone's name before telling them yours. Hmm. Well, my name is Karen, and I'll be your executioner today, said Karen. As she brought her both arms, you know what? Don't bother telling me your name. As her arm turned into magma, it won't matter in a second. Meanwhile, with Neji, rotation! As Neji blew away several sound ninjas. Hey! Neji looked up. As he had saw someone coming, they finally landed on the branch. Seems like you're rather strong. How about we have a go at it? Who are you? said Neji. As he could feel power coming from this man that was not normal. Oh, hello there. My name is Sagetsu. What's your name? My name is Neji Hayuga. Hmm. Well then, Neji Hayuga. I suppose you'll be a challenging fighter for me to finally test my powers. As he had something large on his shoulder, as he brought off his trident blade and twirled it into his hand, he pointed at Neji. This is what I'll use to kill you, he said. Sagetsu slammed the trident into the ground. Neji shot forward only for a wall of water to block his strike, slowing it down. Sagetsu then pushed his arm forward. As Neji felt something slammed into him as he was shot back, he crashed into the ground, confused, until he felt something wet as he looked down to see a hole in his kimono. Soaking wet, Sigetsu then pulled out his staff as he twirled it around before he launched it towards Neji. Not it directly, but he pointed towards him. The water that was around him launched towards Neji like a bullet. Neji flipped to his feet, leaping out of the way as the ground was ripped apart into a massive trench. Water release. Water dragon bullet. Sigetsu released several tiny water balls that came at high speed pressure. They decimated the tree that Neji leaped behind and decimated the rocks. Neji backed up a few steps. Eight trigrams. Empty palm, he said, as he fired invisible force of pure chakra towards Sigetsu, who brought up another wall of water, only to have it explode by the force. Sigetsu simply smirked. The water fall as Neji watched the thin create craters as it slammed into the earth. The water pressure must have been extremely high for it to do that. But how? He was confused. The density in the air was too low for that to happen and he was moving around so quickly. It couldn't have been so powerful, right? As Neji moved forward and attacked Sigetsu who twists and dodge. As Sigetsu moved back, water release, water torrent, he said. Neji moved as he activated the and as he examined the water bullet. The torrent that came towards him but nothing happened. It just hit the ground and was absorbed. But that was confusing the last two times. It created craters. He then turned back to Sigetsu who twirled the trident. As the water twirled around him. Water release. Twin wolf strikes. Sigetsu pointed his trident towards Neji. As the water split into two. Wolf head and rushed towards Neji. As Neji examined the water that Sigetsu was using. Without even a water source nearby. He hopped over the first one and he created a massive crater. As he used the rotation to block the second one. The moment he stopped, he fired the empty palm towards Sigetsu. Sigetsu twirled and blocked it with his strike of its staff. As he stabbed his staff in the ground in the smirk. Seems you are indeed a challenge. It seems I chose right. Well then, Neji. What do you say we continue to the game of ours and have some fun? How is it that you hold the ability to control water like that? Without even a water source nearby to help you, said Neji. Sigetsu laughed as he spin the trident in his hand. Well, I suppose it doesn't matter. But this trident helped me create and control density of water. As you can see from those creatures, I can increase the density of the water attacks. As a large water just appear around him like that. A body of water that merged and twisted and condensed into a copy of him with his own trident in hand. As Nietzsche blink. What the hell? But guys, the end episode right here. If you want to see the next part of the video, like, subscribe, comment down below, and turn on that bell notification as they posted. Remember, share all of your friends in your social media platform. And also, guys, go ahead and check out the brand new episode of What If Naruto.
had a new dream that would change everything over an anime king too. And also, on this channel, I post a brand new episode of What If Naruto became the god of lightning. So go ahead and enjoy that on this channel, guys. And over on Anime King 3, I post a brand new episode of What If Naruto Was Neglected and Jashin was sealed inside of him. So go ahead and enjoy that, guys. And remember, if you're new, to go ahead and click that red subscribe button and become a part of the Anime King family. And thank you for all of your help and support. And yeah, I'm all for now. See you guys soon. Well, tomorrow. Peace.